Hello, Alex Ariza. This is Errol from um from Twitter. I talked to you earlier on about um about interview. Okay, no problem. Hey, yeah. Oh, how are you doing? Okay, um, I'm here with um European um European European boxing and boxing beats and rhymes. Okay. And um, yeah, so we're here based in England, and we got a couple of questions. You know, obviously to talk about um um how you got into boxing and um you know obviously about some of the fighters that you've been influenced, some of the fighters you've been um. Well okay. Okay, I'm ready. Shoot. Okay, then. European boxing. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, Alex. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me tonight. No problem. I was just wondering, how important is fitness and nutrition to boxers today? I think, I think um, better than me saying how much, like, or preaching it the way I've been preaching it for years, I think uh, Marquez, Juan Manuel Marquez, showed just how intricate that the strength and conditioning uh, is in boxing, and even more so, I think it's brought it, it, it. Even though it's a tremendous loss for me, and I, and, but it, it was such a tremendous win for science and exercise and nutrition, and and how it is now brought it's brought, been brought to the forefront with you know just only a few people that have been speaking on its behalf, such like obviously myself, um, Memo Heredia, you know, and 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 and, and another a strength trainer that I have a lot of respect for, which is. Um, Phil Landman, Kodo's ex uh, strength conditioning coach. Okay. That's Thanks, Alex. Uh, what I was think, just hoping you'd bring up was Memo Heredia. Uh, luckily, you took that one right out of my mouth. I was just wondering, you know, what do you think about all the people, and there are quite a few people who are suggesting Juan Manuel Marquez could have been using steroids in that fight where he did get a knockout over Pacquiao? Would you like to tell us what you thought about that? What, 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 okay, what I'd like to tell you, what, how I felt about it? Yeah, what do you think about, about that? Do you think well, um, Pacquiao, uh, sorry, not Pacquiao, um, Marquez was Marquez? in that fight? I do, and I'll tell you why. I do, because studying, you know, exercise and nutritional science has always been a very complex science. And unless you've studied it and researched it and, and been involved in it and, and applied it, you just really don't know anything about it. And um, I think it was very... Uh, it was unprofessional. It was reckless. Um, what people were saying, because I was in those exact shoes before when it came to Manny. Not only Manny, but Amir was under the same, you know, scrutiny. So I just felt it was very unfair, you know, without having any documentation, any proof whatsoever, but to 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 lash out allegations and and things like that. I just thought it was very unprofessional, and I was a little disappointed that it was coming from our side as well. Mm. That's very nice. That's very good. That actually, um, just off the top of my head, have um, any fighters that you've worked with ever tested positive? Well, right now I'm here in in, in Mexico, Culiacan, Mexico, with uh, Chavez Jr. And although we don't have a fight yet, you know Chavez is making some adjustments to his training, and uh, we're now uh, we just want to go and, and we want to have a good year this year. And uh, so we're going to start a little early and just start to, you know, slowly get back, get the fitness back and, um, and, and, and uh, go back to the way we were. And more importantly, what got us here. OK. Definitely. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Um, that's all right. Um, Alex, um, I'd like to ask the question. Yeah. Like going back a bit. Yeah. Going into the Peterson, um, Khan Peterson fight. Um, what went wrong there? Um, or, or what did I go right there? I'd like you to go into that one where um, Amir Khan... How I don't know, like how comes um, you know, in that fight that he didn't perform as he normally does. Do you know any reasons why? I, I thought he, I, I thought he did perform well. Well, <laughs> you know, you got to remember, I, I'm, I'm a strength and conditioning coach. So yeah. what I'm looking at is, was Amir strong? Was he? Was, did Amir? Was he in conditioned enough? Now, if you if you watch that fight, and if you if you do a little uh, research on, there's only two people in the history of boxing that have ever thrown that many body shots and. Uh, in a, in a championship fight. Julio Cesar Chavez was number one when he fought uh, Bick, and Peterson when he fought Amir Khan. Mm -hmm. I've never seen Amir take so many shots in my life. So on a physical and condition standpoint, I thought he looked great. Mm -hmm. There were things that we just didn't expect from Peterson. On a boxing standpoint, well, I'm not his boxing coach. I mean, I, I, you know, that's not my job to, I mean, to tell him not to do this or not to do that. So yeah. I, I, was, I was okay with the physical part. Um, and the approach to the second fight, we had a different approach, and that was to make him bigger and stronger. But unfortunately, that never came through. Mm -hmm. But I, I, thought, I thought he absorbed a tremendous amount of pressure, a lot of uh, a strong shots, 
and and he weathered him, and he came back like a champion he was. Mm. Uh, what would you say, like, were you and Amir Khan, there was some, some a rumble that you and him, you stopped working with him and you went to work with Chavez. Could you go into that? What happened in, in that little thing? It, it, it's just very simple. I mean, I know there's so much speculation. There was never a problem with me and Amir. It was a problem with the fact that um, my contract, after a month, after months of months of negotiating prior to the Peterson camp even started, uh, I was expecting a contract and I never got it. Okay. And I just don't understand why is it why why is it time after time after time when I have to deal with that with the, with those people that I'm always I'm always the one that's having to deal with contract issues. Mm. So you know if, if I'm not if if you're so unprofessional enough, I mean if Chavez, which didn't have a fight until months after Julio, had my contract ready and out, if who if, if Manny Pacquiao can have my contract ready and out, why can't why can't they? Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is true. So, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, Alex, I was just yeah. wondering what your thoughts are on you know uh, Amir Khan switched a uh, strength and conditioning trainer for the uh, the Garcia fight, and he obviously yeah. lost that fight by knockout. Was there anything you right. could have done differently in training to maybe help or not? Of course I'm going to say yes, because I don't think there's anybody out there that knows how to train Amir. And I'll tell you why also, because I started training Amir years ago. I built him the way that I felt he needed to be built and, and conditioned because um, I knew his style. Now, if you look, like again, if you look at the Mia Donna fight in the 10th round, Amir took 72 unanswered shots to the head. Mm. 72 from one of the biggest punchers, or considered the biggest puncher, in the 140-pound division. Yeah. And Amir not only weathered the storm, but came back to the corner, got his head straight, and then came out and won the 11th and 12th round. Mm. Explain, and then, and then you get a guy like Garcia, who, with no disrespect for him, but he's not the puncher me Adana is. Mm. Yeah. How do you get him? How, 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 I mean, he looked, I, I just, for me, it's, it's inconceivable for me to understand that somebody would bring Amir in, knowing that his physical, his physical uh, appearance is, is, is such an, a big advantage, why would you bring him in at 140 pounds a week before the fight? Mm. What, explain that to me. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. No so, you can, uh, it's it's just <laughs> silent. You yeah, don't you, do that. It's obviously, you can see, that. evidently, you can see, that obviously, when you was training him, he, was, he could take the shots on Maidana, and then you, when you wasn't training him, and he was getting hit in the sparring, and then when he got hit by, hit yeah. by Garcia, you're obviously evidently when you left him, that's the weakness is there. Not really. He, he, he his blamed, leg. Yeah, he blaming Freddie. It wasn't blaming Freddie. It was you obviously giving him. You know, you, so what goes into your training? What exactly do you do to make yeah. them make them so? You know what I mean? To make them with them. What kind of training, fitness training do you, do you make them I, go for? I, I, I'm a strong. I think Amir will tell you I am a strong believer in in in. in uh, and the very foundation of, of the sport, which is your legs. So I do such an, an intense uh, training regimen on, on developing their legs because when the chin goes, when you get hit, what's the first thing that goes? The, the legs. legs. Mm. So it, unless those legs have felt the absolute fatigue and absolute uh, um, the, the, the lactic acid build up, the, the just the, uh, like to where you just don't, the numbness, the, the I mean, when there's nothing there, unless they've been pushed to that point and you get hit, there's nothing there for them for there to be a muscle memory of the, to that they've been at that point. Mm. Mm. So when Amir got hit by Garcia, his legs were all over the place because they, they didn't know, what, they, they couldn't stabilize themselves. There was no balance. Mm -hmm. mm. And then, oh, awesome. you know, needless to say, but go so, ahead. Sorry, okay, so, uh, thank you. Um, as a big Amir Khan fan, uh, will you be working with him in the future? <laughs> you know, I, like I said, and, and I always say this, I don't have any problems with Amir. I think we're, we're still friends. I thought of us as friends even from the beginning. This is a business. And when Amir wants to take, I, for, for me, I work for the fighter. It's just like I, I'm here at Julio's house right now. I don't need to hear from the promoter. I don't need to hear from the managers. I don't need to hear from his, from his dad or his mom or anybody else. I need to hear from Julio to say, hey, bro, I want you to come out here now. And I'm on a plane and I'm out here. I don't need to, you know, I work for the fighter. 
Mm. So when uh, Emil wants to get control of his own career and start calling the shots, and he says, hey, Alex, then him and I will sit down and we'll discuss it, and that'll be something, you know, at that point. Okay. But at this point right now, thankfully, thank, uh, you know, with, with the tremendous win that, fucking, that Marquez had, I think it brought uh, strength and conditioning to a whole new level, and I'm just getting more work than I've ever got just because of that. Sad to say. Mm. Well, Alex, good, then. Um, I've just got one more question so. for you, um, Alex. Is that okay? Yeah. Shoot, I got all night. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, I think it's some more. <laughs> no, um, I always see you in the Manny Pacquiao corner. And like, like you said, you're the fitness and conditioning coach. How come you're always in the corner and you're always working with Manny? It seems you're giving him instructions. Can you elaborate on that or maybe... Sure. For the people? Um, you know, it, it, you, I mean, it's, when you work as much as I do, because you've got to understand, I, I, I've been in this business now 12 years. I started with Diego Corrales. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you spend that much time with a fighter, you know, you know them. You know the looks on their faces. You know the changes in body language. You know about almost every intricate detail about them physically. And there's also a communication sometimes that can just happen without any words. So, um, you know, certain fighters feel comfortable with me having me there and, and they want me there. So, you know, as much as they didn't want me in Manny's corner for the Bradley fight, obviously Manny wanted me there. Um, Julio, uh, in the very, very beginning of his career when he, um, I have always been his cut man and had always worked his corner and he feels comfortable with me there. They forced me, you know, I was forced out of one of the fights, obviously, but I'm, I'm here now. Okay. So, um, Amir, I think you're also felt comfortable with having me there. So, you know, you really, it's, it's just a matter of the, the personal relationship and the rapport and me knowing their body and, and even, and, and worse, you know, if there's a, if there's a problem, an injury that a, a, occurs, I'm there at least, you know, in the event of that. But, you know, you got to also be, remember, I've been, I've been in this business 12 years. I mean, yeah. if I'm, if I'm as smart as I say I am, I better start to learn. I, I, I'm sure I picked up a thing or two on working corners. So, Alex, yeah. um, you and Bob Arum, is it just a clash of personalities or is he just an awkward mofo to <laughs> work with? I'm sorry, one more time, you didn't come through. You and Bob Arum, your relationship. Is, yeah. it, is it a clash of personalities or is he just an awkward son of a B to work with? Uh, you know, I think everybody's, you know, uh, I'm Ted with Aram at one time or another. Um, but, you know, we're okay. You know, we know what we're just doing what's best for the fighters. He, he feels he's doing what's best. I feel I'm doing what's best. And, you know, ultimately, you know, we'll move past that. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to focus on, on, on getting back on track and, and start winning. And okay. I, uh, so I think Bob is now is, is more supportive and, and is understanding. Obviously, you know, since what, what a terrible year his fighters had yeah. um yeah. so you know he, he i he, like he said to me you know he believes that i'm a, I'm, a, I'm an intricate part of these guys and, and he wants this he wants everybody to go back to doing what they used to do okay so what about you and freddie roach and um the pacquiao camp there seem to be a few ruptions in-house well like- you know you know i mean we, freddie and i i mean for me it's, it's just very it's, it's hard just because you know, it, it, unknowingly, they, they did their own experiment, their own experiments. I mean, you saw, you saw science in its rawness. You took, th- you, took three, you took three subjects and you made them do the same program for three years. And then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, you decided to remove one intricate deep part of that program. And look at the, the vast, the vast, the vast uh, changes that were made in, the, in those. Yeah. We went from having a four, almost a four-year undefeated season, and now, you, now Freddie and I parted, and you took me out of the equation pretty much, and now look at what happened. Mm-hmm. I've got a feeling I mean, that... look at the results. Yeah. I have a feeling that Pacquiao doesn't trust a lot of people in boxing, and I can see why, but he seems to have a lot of faith in you. Why is that? Well, I think it's not... I think it's trust. You know, I don't, I mean, what I tell you when I'm, when I'm training you, I'm not trying to tell you things that I have, that I've invented. I'm not telling you what I think. I'm not telling you what I want you to do or what my agenda is. I'm trying to tell you what science has proven 
over the course of years and years and years. I'm bringing you the cutting edge and the latest technology. I mean, science has given us so many clues over the years on how to manipulate and how to change and, and how to, you know, get a, an athlete to go from a great athlete to an, an elite athlete. So we have to take advantages of those things. And I think I've shown those things earlier with Manny in the, in the beginning years. Okay. And for whatever reason, the last three fights, he decided on it to, you know, to change. I think it was, I think it was more pressure, you know, than it was him, but, um, to change and to do something different. But, you know, for whatever reason, they wanted to do no strength and conditioning for the Marquez fight. Yeah. And, and, and they also wanted to make it very, very public that I wasn't involved. And, um, so, you know, here's the awkward question. But Manny and I are, go ahead. Uh, here's the one, um, question I have to go because people are going to gun me if I don't ask. Why are you always attributed to put in a little extra naughtiness in your supplements for your boxes? Why do people alligate that? Why do they think I do? Yeah. Well, because I think they're looking at the way that these fighters have gone from being from, from good performances to absolute elite performances. I mean, look at what happened to Amir when he fought... Um, Breedis Prescott, and just look at the, 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 the fire, the powerhouse that he became after. I yeah. mean, he, he rose all over again. I mean, we went seven, almost seven unde, un, you know, undefeated fights, and, 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 the, and the fights that I didn't work with, McCloskey, he had a terrible fight with McCloskey, and yeah. come back the next fight, and he destroys Judah in five rounds. Mm -hmm. You know? So I think that, and then Manny, the way, you know, you got to remember when I started with Manny right before that, he went 12 rounds with Barrera. He went 12 rounds with Marquez. I get there. We knock out David Diaz. We knock out De La Hoya. We knock out Ricky Hatton. We knock out Miguel Cotto. You know, we have a great fight with, uh, with Quadi. And, and if it wasn't for the fact that, uh, 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 Margarito was made out of iron, I think he would have just, you know, destroyed him. Okay. But he sort of yeah, did destroy him as well. If you you know, Sorry? yeah, I said he almost he really he, he did, did destroy his career. Well. Can I just ask one, my last yeah. question? Yeah, my last one is this: is um, Go ahead. can a fighter yeah. these days in 2013 compete without high tech supplements or a high tech nutritionist like you? I, okay, I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. Can a fighter really compete these days if he doesn't have a high-tech nutritionist like you these days? Oh, well, it's not just the nutrition. Again, it's, the, it's a strength and conditioning program that you applied. You apply, and I think that they're going to suffer. And, it's, and, it, and the sad thing is, and it's not because they don't know any better. It's because there's, there's too much ego with the, there's too much ego involved. There's too much personal agenda. You know, trainers are going to have to accept their, their what they're capable and what they're limited to. And they just don't know the science. And the day, and, and when you refuse to accept that the body is, is and training is science, you're going to stay at those lower levels and the fighter is going to suffer. Okay. But it's the smart fighters out there, the smart trainers out there that are accepting it, embracing it, and now getting involved in it, bringing us into, the, into, the, into their camps. We are going to be, I'll tell you, the changes are being made now and, and, and this Marquez fight has brought science to the forefront. And now you're going to see just how important it is when you apply science to, to, a, to a training regimen and how these fighters are going to start to, to, to climb level, level. I mean, it's just going to, it's going to come and it's going to be, I think it's going to take boxing to a whole new level. Mm, definitely. Um, I, 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 are you saying earlier on that you work with Diego Corrales? How, how many other fighters, known fighters, is, like you said, you had 12 years, obviously, in, in, in the game. Which other fighters have you worked with, apart from Diego Corrales and Pacquiao and, and obviously Amir Khan who, and Chavez Jr.? Who else have you worked with? Well, so in, in my early years, um, I got to, when I first got out of uh, college, I used, uh, my first one was obviously Diego Corrales, but I have worked with Angel Manfredi. I worked a little bit with Jose Luis Castillo. I worked with Cesar Bazan. I mean, um, Cesar, all Cesar Bazan? Fighters. Was that yeah. Cesar, Cesar, yeah. <laughs> which corner were you in when uh, Cesar Bazan fought um, Castillo? Were you in that corner? Were you, which trainer did you train? What you train each one? Which I one? train. I train. Unfortunately, I had uh, Diego Corrales was in camp, but Cesar Bazan was the sparring partner there. So yeah. yes, I did train him. Oh man! Wow! Wow! What a war, right? 
Yeah, you've been you've been around some of the guys, yeah, you just stand there toe to toe like Corrales and Castillo, even says up Azan, you know, them guys are serious warriors, you know. Being you know, the- and God and, and, and rest in peace, uh, Diego Corrales, because I really don't believe I would have become the trainer I am today if I didn't start with somebody like him, mm. because he was, I mean, he was such a, 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 you know, not only being six feet tall, but fighting at 130 pounds, I, I was forced to, 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 to get, to learn, to read, to study harder, to, to advance my, my education, mm. because he was just so difficult, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was you in the corner when he was Floyd, Floyd at that time? Yes, I was. Oh, yes, I, I, was. I, 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 so what happened there? Like, because because I, I remember at the time, yeah, he went up, he went up, he moved up in weight, um, to lightweight, and then vacated the belt and then came back down. I mean, can you elaborate right. on? Was that right? And he came back down, and it's like did that weaken him or something? Like, he, he wasn't fighting. He, I don't know. Yeah. Why he wasn't fighting, right? Because you know, before when he fought Garcia and he fought um um he fought um what's his name again? May, um, Roy Jones' yeah, guy. Yeah, Freddie. Gainer. Yeah, man, yeah, man, Freddie. Uh, and oh even no. the guy, what's the guy, what's the guy? Ray Derek Jones Gainer, was, didn't he beat Derek, Derek Gainer? Derek Gainer, yeah, yeah. Them people, like, them, he was just, just walking through them. And when he Destroyed fought Floyd, him. yeah, when he walked through, yeah, exactly. When he well, fought Floyd, it was I, I'll like... I'll give you a little history. Yeah, go on. I'll give you a little history. At that time, Diego, unfortunately, was facing some, uh, some criminal charges of uh, domestic violence. Oh, yeah. And um, so we were flying back and forth to Sacramento. And... Um, t- so I think, you know, you have to remember, man, we were kids then. He was, I think, 22 years old. I was 25, 26. Mm. And, you know, flying back and forth I, and, and knowing that Sacramento over here is a non-tolerant state. So it's mandatory prison time that they were going to give him for, oh. for that, yeah, for so what he had done. His, his wife was pregnant at the time that the altercation happened. Mm. So... I mean, there were just so many distractions flying us back and forth, and, the, and you know, he got ill uh, the last couple of weeks. But, hey, that's nothing to take anything away from Floyd. He was a tactician, and, you, I mean, the way he, he fainted, to, he, he started off at the body, and then later around he started fainting, hooking over the top. Mm. I mean, what a tremendous job he did. So you got to just give Floyd a lot of credit for it as yeah. well. We should have had a real trainer in the corner. What yeah. we needed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You had um, you had what's he what's his name again? Yeah, that Mexican guy. What's his name? Oh no, you had thing. His dad. Mm-hmm. It was his Miguel thing. Diaz. Yeah, yeah, Miguel. Oh, he had Miguel Diaz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what what's what happened in Diego Valles' last fight? You was in his last fight against um Joshua Cotty. I no no. I was not longer with uh. I was no longer with Diego after that. Yeah. What was his last? What was the no, last fight? That fight? No, 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 no. Was Kof- Kof- that was Kofi. Corrales Castillo. Corrales Castillo won. Oh, that's the that's the last time you worked with him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was a great fight. What was his last oh, fight? Co- was it Kofi Joanna? Was it or Clay? Oh, no, it was Joshua Clay. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Joshua well, Clay. And yeah, he, I think and, I think the problem with that is is that you know these fighters they get it in their head that if they're going to move up in weight, mm. they have it, it, they don't feel that they don't have to maybe work as hard or watch the diet, but that's where the war comes in. If you're going to move up a fighter in weight, mm. that's where the real war comes in. That's where you're going to really see. The, the nutrition and the, and the exercise yeah. really, you know, come to their to their advantage. Can I get yeah. one in there? Um, did you see the Andre Ward um, uh, Dawson fight? I did. Where did Dawson go wrong in just observing from the outside? It, it, it's just it, you know that's the thing when you tell me to do something from the outside. I can Monday morning quarterback this thing all day long. But unless I know what Dawson did to make weight, I know there was a struggle. But I just don't know the details. Yeah, okay, right. I don't know how it went. I don't know how they trained. I don't know how the diet went. You know, and when you don't know those intricate details, you just don't know. That's why it says, when they say, Alex, who do you pick for this guy or to that guy? All right, can I ask you a different question? Can Can I rephrase my question then? What should he have done, ideally? I, you know, you, you, you go out there, you, you find a guy that's a, 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 a strength and conditioning coach. You find a, the, the, top nutri- the top nutritionist out there. You have to remember, I'm not in, what, what I do, I'm not in this alone. Yeah. I have a tremendous team. Okay. I mean, oh. I, I, have a, I have a degree not only in exercise science, I've spent two years at Health Science College of Medicine, oh. studied biochemistry. Wow. But, uh, my, um, my, my dietitian studied at UCLA, did her... her um, her postgraduate and internship at Cedar Sinai, the most prominent hospital in there. She's wow. a top uh, dietitian in Los Angeles. So, 
so and then I also have um, uh, the, the 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 new girl who works with um, Manny Pacquiao. That uh, you know the cramp problem is no 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 secret. Mm. But if I could, I thought to myself, if I couldn't get, if I couldn't get uh, rid of the cramps myself over three fights, I, and Manny didn't want to train the way I wanted him to train, I needed to bring somebody in who was an expert at it. Okay. And I brought in Krista Pryor. She works for the LA Cl- uh, the LA Clippers, and she she really deserves all the credit for not having any cramps at all for this fight. Um, and then I have I have uh, Henry Martena. I mean, I have a I have a I have a staff. Because you cannot be, you don't, you cannot be cocky enough or or confident enough to think that you know everything. Because you don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you see the cramps, like that's another. Uh, a lot of people is who else is, is is Pacquiao the only guy you've worked with who's got cramps? Pacquiao has been uh, the only guy that I worked with that had cramps. Yeah. Okay, why does he keep getting cramps? That's a good question. Well, I brought in Krista Pryor, and you should go, and, that's, and if anybody wants to go, um, her, uh, you can tweet her at, at Krista Pryor. But um, she started working on what they call neuromuscular, um, neuromuscular gliding. Mm-hmm. And what it is is that there's the brain, sometimes it's like you have one dominant side. Yeah. You know, you're either your left hand or right hand. Well, her, what she does, her strength as, as a specialist, she starts to make the brain focus on muscles that can't respond as the same way that our, our dominant ones do. So in training and in exercising, she starts to focus on their, those, those less dominant, weaker muscles and get them to develop and respond and have that same amount of, to be able to respond to the quickness and things like that the way, you, and uh, it works for us. Yeah. Um, sorry, guys. Um, why do the... Old school traditionalists in boxing have such objections to guys like you coming into the sport. Because they fear what they don't know or what they can't understand. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's I mean, it's, it, it, it's ignorance, really. You know, why 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 talk about something that you don't know anything about? Yeah, it's like me. You know, uh, it, it, like me wanting to be a journalist and then saying, "Oh, you don't have to do this." How I know nothing about <laughs> journalism. Yeah. yeah. I know nothing about being a reporter. I know nothing about it. Yeah. So why open my mouth? It's fear of their methods because becoming people, obsolete. It's just fear of their methods becoming obsolete, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's yeah it. I, I mean, it's just very simple. You know, it's ego. They don't want somebody to come in there and, and take away whatever, you know, whatever little bit of fame or yeah, whatever yeah. it is. You know, it's, it's about ego. And I told, and I'm like I've always said, you have to accept the fact that this is about the fighter. It's not about you, your ego, or or how people see you. So, mm. wow, um, yeah. You know. So, um, so I was, the, I was gonna say about um Travis, the so Travis Junior. Um, you know, on on the HBO, you got the impression that he was lazy. So when you say that, you know, would you say, and you're saying that he worked really hard? Obviously, he did because the the shots he took from um from um, Martinez like you think uh, boy uh-huh. he took a lot of shots <laughs> no I know he took loads of shots from him and obviously you must have got yeah. him in great shape but obviously HBO made up it seemed like he was lazy Did he, does he work hard is he lazy like can you could elaborate on I'll tell you what I can to tell you and it's, you can make the you know the, the uh, assessment yourself look at John Duddy look at Lyle look at um, it's Vic look at Manfredo look at Rubio you know, we did every, the, the work that it took to get us here in seven fights and make him a world champion that he is. What happened was is that we, there was some changes. I didn't really take the role of strength and conditioner for this for this fight. They, they wanted to bring in somebody else, um, diet wise, and you know, and it's always a good thing. I always, I always, you know, embrace that mm. because when it doesn't go the way it should have gone, then well, here I am. I'm back. So. Um, <laughs> oh, that's it, terrible. He, <laughs> yeah. he, he's not he's not a lazy fighter. He's not uh he just trains at different out you know, look at Floyd Mayweather. He yeah. trains at three in the morning, two in the morning, four in the morning. And you know what? They've earned that. Mm. If he wants to train at four in the morning, then you gotta be on you gotta be on point, man. You gotta get up and you gotta go train at four in the morning. Yeah. You know, so it doesn't matter what time you train, it matters how you train. And when he turns on, when he turns on the on, on the gas, man, I tell you what, he's he's one of the hardest workers I've ever worked with. Okay. 
definitely. Um, I'm I, just think, I, just, no, I no. just think, you know, this year, just so you know, this year we're just going to get away. It's not a reality TV series, you, you know, for him, and he didn't like it, and I think he felt uh, it, it, that it was an, intrud- an intrusive yeah, and, was, yeah. and uh, people talking about what was going on in and out of camp. He didn't like it, and, um, you know, he, he made the, he's making changes. Okay, um, one more question on Oxen. So there's rumors about Pacquiao's Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease. Is, do you know anything about it or, or a slight part? No. I do. Uh, you know what? That, I mean, I don't know if you followed up, but that doctor was, in, was in, immediately um, uh, censored by the medical uh, association in the Philippines. You know, sometimes people just like to talk to get some airtime, and that's all it was. Yeah, uh, yeah, I thought so. Okay. When was the last time you talked to Pacquiao? I just left the Philippines two weeks ago. I've been in Mexico only two weeks. So I was with him for two weeks. Uh, I was with him for a month over there. Okay, how's he doing? He's good, you know, high spirits and everything. And um, But see, you have to remember, he's such a sportsman. He's like, I don't understand. You know, that's sports. You win some, you lose some. I mean, we were like the Yankees for a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nobody could beat us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. You, you have to remember, you know, as, as a sportsman, you also have to remember... What did I do to get here? Mm. And you have to remember how, how hard it was to get to this point. You just can't get lazy and think that it, it, it's just, just going to be a wave that you're going to ride. Mm. You have to remember, man, that there's younger guys that are doing everything that you can do and to, uh, that they can do to beat you, you know? Yeah. And Marquez did everything underneath the sun. To, to, to beat Manny, and, you know, they deserve a lot of credit. They don't deserve the criticism that they're receiving. I think it's unfair, it's unjust, and, and it's just not, it, it's wrong. You, you didn't see that one coming, though. Because I, 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 I remember in HBO, I remember what you said. He goes, I don't think God could come down and beat um, Manny. I think you that said... Was, that, was, yeah. that was the third one. That was the yeah, third yeah, the third one. one. Yeah, in the third one. You didn't, at that point, you know... You didn't think, when that fight happened, you didn't think it was going like that. That was a very close I, fight. I said that, listen. I, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. I said that. <laughs> you know, you, you, you have to remember, it's a team. It takes a team that works together, puts their egos aside, and doesn't want to sit there and say, oh, it's me, 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 me. I did this, I did that. Mm. Because when you get people like that, it's just, it has, you're heading for disaster. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, you know, honestly, yeah, we was talking about Amir Khan earlier, and to be honest with you, it looks like he's declined. I think he might need you. I don't know if he, if he, if, he, if you know, if he's got pride or something like that. But to be honest with you, man, in his last fight, he didn't look too good. You know, he didn't look too good in his well, last fights. I don't. Not, not I mean, his... th- go on. I don't. I don't. I don't like. I said it. I'm just calling it how I see it because I know Amir for four or five years now, yeah. and I know how he used to. Sh- I mean, bigger guys in the gym when he'd hit him, he would rock him. And I just, it find, it's just very hard for me to understand how he can't knock out a guy who's moving up from two divisions. It just, I'm, I just don't understand it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, the little guy the, he fought, the, the last guy he fought, right? Molina. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, I'll tell you what, back in the day, we would have went through that dude in four or five rounds. <laughs> so that's what I was thinking. He's, he seems like he's going backwards. And apparently, maybe his next fight is going to be against Garcia. I hope not. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Really? What do you think is going to happen? Early, it's going to be a quick off. I think, I think he can beat... But don't get me wrong. I think he can beat him. He just, does, he just doesn't have the right team around him, man. That guy, the way we were going... I'll tell you what, man. We were on our way to a, to a, to a, to a Floyd Mayweather fight. And, those, and that people destroyed his career. Yeah. Destroyed it. Yeah, he did. He, he did. He derailed it. For I mean, real, we, we, we were on a roll. On a, on a roll, man. I mean, he was developing in a way his power, the way his confidence man yeah, yeah i mean that that i mean that 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 fight was you mayweather mayweather amir was i could at that time maybe three fights away two or three fights away well, you, do you think i'm gonna keep I, it honest i don't think i don't think amir could have won it even with I your don't, expertise I mean, won the fight. Yeah, you're, you're his trainer though but you'd have you'd have done the best he could to get him in shape but i don't think you know from what we you would have had your work cut out in my opinion but, but I, it doesn't matter if he would have won or not but that would have been the biggest. I mean, nobody would have, nobody would have, uh, would have, uh, you know, would have been on top of him if he lost to the best fighter in the world. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's you true. know, but he gave it a shot. He got there. 
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Give it a shot. That's right. You know? Yeah. yeah. Maybe he wouldn't have won, but fuck, we got there. Oh, yeah. Sorry about yeah. That. You got, to, um, you got to go for it. You got to go for it. <laughs> that's all right, man. That's all right, man. So Alex. What, but we got there. Yeah. yeah go, on. go on, Europe. Alex, I've just got a quick question for you that I forgot to ask before. What were your thoughts oh. on Lamont Peterson's failed VADA test? Um, disappointing, as, as, of course, as anybody else. Um, uh, I was surprised, to be honest with you. But, you know, here's the thing. I mean, uh, uh, testosterone replacement is now, has, like I said, everybody has this, like, closed mentality in boxing. You need to get yourself, people need to get themselves out there and start realizing that testosterone replacement, you know, and not only that, but uh, testosterone deficiency has now become, uh, the, for the first time, uh, a clinical disease in medicine, you know, because there's so many things that are causing the pituitary gland to, 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 for whatever reason, to cause a decrease in testosterone levels in men. And that causes us to become, you know, uh, lethargic and unable to have the energy levels. So now doctors are trying to figure out what they can do to, you know, level things out. Now, there's a difference between replacement therapy and using it as a performance-enhancing drug, you know. Mm-hmm. Either way, I understand it. it, it it's not accepted in, 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 um, in sports, but you have to really look at the level of whether or not it did give him an advantage or not. Okay. Uh, the reason I asked that was I was talking to Gabriel Montoya, and he said that you need, if you're going to use that as an excuse afterwards, you need a, um, a special, is it a special form that you fill in to say, I need this, I need it for this reason, la, la, la. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Did you, well, did you your team or anyone else get one of those, uh, get, a, get anything from Peterson to say he needed that kind of therapy? Before, I, I think his doctor, his doctor himself came on record and said that he was, he, he, he was given testosterone, uh, he had injected a testosterone pellet. But due to research, those pellets, our, uh, our slow releasing pellet that releases testosterone into the system. And, and, and those things don't come in very high doses. They're very small. And, it, and I think, you know, um, I think, may, like, again, I don't know that it would have had an effect on him performance wise. You don't, you don't think it would have affected the performance in the ring? No, not to the point though. Did he, did he, did he get, did he become stronger? Did he have more energy? Did he do that? I, it's, it's not going to do that. You have to remember, you have levels. And the only thing that the, the doctors ethic, ethically are allowed to do is bring those levels up to, that, up to what they call normal levels. Optimal levels to where, where, you, where you should be. Right. I was under the impression that Lamont Peterson's testosterone to epitestosterone ratio was 3.77 afterwards. I can't, I can't, I, I have, I have no idea. I didn't, you know, he, at that point, you know, he wasn't my fighter. So, I mean, Amir wasn't my fighter. I didn't, I, I just be honest with you. I didn't, I didn't care. It was none of my business. In your <laughs> eyes. Know. Sorry, Mark. Um, so, uh, come back in straight away, European. In your eyes, is, is Peterson a cheat? In your eyes? Yeah, I think he's a cheat. I'm sorry? No, to, saw, Ari- uh, to Alex, eyes, to Alex Ariza. Sorry. You can answer what, after. Not- um, is Peterson a cheat in your eyes, Mr. Ariza? Yes, it, 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 whether you, it is cheating. Yes, okay. it is. Um, and you I, think yeah. so too, European, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alex, Alex. I'm, yeah, I do. Um, yeah. On the YouTube boxing, on the YouTube community, yeah, it's been a big debate, big, massive, about Manny Pacquiao. People think Manny Pacquiao is taking some sort of performance in harm. And, and, and um, whether or not, obviously, you're a trainer, we, we, obviously, you know. Where, where. But my big question is that, um, about, about the whole thing about that is that, um, I was gonna say again. Um, do you do you, you know like why wouldn't he take the blood test? Then Floyd laid out for him is because I mean you do. You, you t- know, here's a, go on, go you on. gotta understand. I, I, I mean, I am. Uh, I, I'm not privy to those things, and I and and it's just it's between the promoters. I mean, you just gotta those things gotta be in a contract. I mean, yeah. to, I, I and I can tell you this personally because I'm probably the closest person to Manny. Manny has told me on several different occasions. That the only problem that he has is, is, is giving too much blood. He doesn't, you gotta remember, man, he's not a doctor. Mm. And, and, and who knows the kind of advice because, you know, Michael Kahn is, is, is half a moron. So who knows what he's telling Manny that, oh, we gotta take a liter of blood or we gotta do this. So he, he's just not privy 
to just how simple the tests are. Okay. So, you, you know, you, as Alex, for me, I mean, you're asking me why not, why not? I don't know why not. But All I, I know but is that Alex, Nanny just didn't feel like giving too much blood away. With millions of dollars at stake, I, I, this is from a person outside the loop. For millions of dollars at stake, wouldn't you just take the test? Well, you have to also understand, you're talking about Golden Boy versus, uh, versus Bob Arum. You're talking about, you know, the, I mean, those are the, the, those are the two biggest enemies. And I don't know, two people who hate each other more. Okay. So is, is it true that, it, that, that the fight, you know, hung on the balance of a lousy blood test? All right, that's, or that's another point. Is it because, or is it because I'm just not going to work with you and that's it? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, so, what, so what about actually, Manny? Manny, you said himself though. After the Eric Morales fight, the loss, and they took they yeah. took they took tests at him. He felt weak. Um, Freddie said it as yeah. well, and they said that's why they don't like taking tests. Well, you was you was working with um, Manny. Was you working with Manny when he lost against Eric Morales the first time? No, I started working with Manny five years ago. My first fight is when he moved up to fight David Diaz. Oh, that was when he got a he beat the heck out of David Diaz. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, you know, <laughs> he pulled it to David Diaz, and then after that he went against Morales, right? No, no, did he go to Morales again? No, he went to Morales before that. He went to Morales two times before that, right? You know, before the, oh yeah, but you only worked from Diaz. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, all right then. Well, we kind of exhaust our questions at the minute. Um, so have you got any details? Our, our um, the YouTube people can contact you, obviously, like Twitter and Facebook and any other website. Uh, uh, Absolutely. Anybody that feels, you know, whatever they want, any questions or anything there is that you guys want to ask me, remember, the only dumb question is a question not asked. Uh, Twitter me at, uh, at Ariza Fitness. I'll, I'll answer as much as I can. And, is, you know, especially when I'm here and I got so much downtime. But I want to just thank everybody and especially the support from the UK. Man, you guys are just the best. Thanks, man. No Thanks, problem, man. man. And I really Thanks. appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, Alex. All right. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Alex, man. Okay, we took. We're gonna leave you now. We talk to you soon, hopefully. Um, who's what you got? What have you got coming up next? Anything? Any fighters coming up next, or anything coming up? Well, I haven't got the fight schedule yet, but I know that um, hopefully we're looking at uh, Chavez Jr. sometime in April or May. Um, and then we have uh, again. I have my MMA fighter fighting this Thursday or next Thursday. Next Thursday on Spike TV. I don't know if it'll go over to the UK, but uh, mm. you know. So I'm just waiting for the for the fight schedule, just like everybody else. No problem. Okay. All right, Alex, man. All right, thanks, Yom. It's been a pleasure, Alex. You take care. Yourself. Yeah. Thank but, you, mate. Yes. You thank you very care. much. Take okay. care, man. Big shout out and big, big shout out to the UK. All yes, right, thanks, no bro. Doubt. All right, take care. Peace. Peace. Bye. 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 